Hey everyone, um, so about a few days ago, um, four or five days ago was the anniversary of the time that I actually lost all of my hearing on my left ear. Four years ago, when I was in Bhutan, of all places, this happened. It was, uh, it was a really, really shocking event. I mean, it started when I was at home. Um, I started uh, feeling a little dizziness and I didn't know what it was. I thought I actually had um, not been drinking enough water. And when I got to Bhutan a few days into a trip, um, I had progressive bouts of dizziness to the point where one day I just fell over and couldn't stand up. I was so you know, completely, um, uh, you know, with such vertigo. Um, I was taken to a clinic and eventually, you know, doctors and so forth. But the moment that I knew exactly what had happened is when I got a call in order to arrange uh, for a car that was going to take me to, to the capital city uh, to go see other doctors. And I grabbed the phone and I thought, oh crap, I can't hear anything. You know, his phone's broken. Then it occurred to me to put it on the other side and I could hear perfectly well. And I realized I'd lost all my hearing. Um, I went home a few days later and um, had all the treatments uh, that I could <laughs> uh, that were available. But in a sense, uh, it's still a mystery what happens to a lot of people like myself that get this sudden sense of neural hearing loss and it is sudden it's over a couple of days some people even wake up uh, not being able to hear and it's incredibly frightening and um, most most people regain actually uh, a lot of their hearing but I didn't and uh, it's um, it, it's a you know some people say well you know I mean at least you have your other ear and uh, yes that's positive but it's almost like saying, hey, you know, at least you lost one leg and not two. It's, uh, it's, it's not necessarily um, something that makes you any uh, happier to, uh, to contemplate the fact that it could have been worse. Um, one of the things that's really unusual about hearing is that it, it's, it's like sight, you know, you actually have dimensional hearing. You, you have this, uh, depth when you see and you know if you close one eye and you try to calculate distance and so forth everything is flattened it's the very same thing that happens with hearing you not only have um, the ability to localize a sound when you have two ears but your brain understands when a sound is coming from further away and a sound is coming from closer in and it accommodates to what is important and what is not important in, in that respect okay so so if you have only one ear you can only not only localize sound you can't you don't know where it's coming from but it's all flattened everything is about equally important and you can imagine when I first had this I'm recuperating um, I would go to to the supermarket and every single sound in that booming kind of box store was frightening and it was I didn't know it was close far I couldn't you know somebody was talking a distance away it sounded like it was right next to me and uh, it creates this a lot of stress in your brain just being able to trying to deal with all of this stuff that is is going on that you can't understand and it's totally new and a new way to actually um, uh, live in your environment use this new environment it's the same place but it feels differently because you can sa suddenly not understand a lot of the information that's coming to you and then going out you know to a restaurant or so on it's even more complicated all these sounds you can't hear people right in front of you you have to really pay attention to the point where you know by the time you 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 leave you're you're, you're exhausted even if you've been having a good time because you've been trying to take pay, take in all this info uh, all, all this uh, at the same time uh, it's difficult and uh, so I don't want to bum you up because the news is good that I have for you 
and for me, I hope. So I'm four years into this. I've been able to adjust really well. I've been able to keep on running tours. I've been able to incorporate people to help me in running the tours because I, I now can no, no longer feel um, that I can lead a tour all by myself anywhere given that my hearing is not um, good in terms of localization. I can still hear birds and identify them. But uh, uh, I've adjusted. It's been, it's been fine. Uh, there's been all these elements of, of other elements like uh, tinnitus or tinnitus as some people call it that's been it's like a jet engine going off in my bad ear all the time that I've adjusted to even though uh, you know I went to a doctor once who said boy you know you're doing really well a lot of people that have this level of uh, tinnitus are you know basically suicidal <laughs> and I thought again this does not make me feel any better um, what did make me feel better is that do that doctor recognized me from some uh, spots that had been going on uh, late night TV where I was uh, in you know doing a public service announcement about gulls and birding and so forth and he'd seen these and he said I know I knew you you know I, your face it was uh, familiar you're the gull, you're the bird guy so I, I like that you know but I didn't like the fact that he couldn't help me with my you know all this this jet engine in the, in the air but the good news is that tomorrow I go in for a surgery called uh, cochlear implant which is going to allow me to hopefully be able to detect sound again from my bad ear it'll be different it'll be simpler it'll be more mechanical or you know robot like but your brain adjusts especially if you have a good ear to teach your brain how to assess those sounds and hopefully it'll be able to suddenly you know go back to being able to hear uh, what direction things are coming from and maybe start getting more of a multi-scape sound um, um, environment almost like I used to have not quite but I'm really really excited happy about this and um, it's uh, I thought I'd put this together just to see if, you know, as we go along, as I get this uh, cochlear implant, I can travel, you know, allow you to travel with me in this sort of journey of, of rehearing and perhaps other people who are deaf in one ear and maybe not even birders, but just people in, in the one-sided hearing loss club can uh, get a sense for what this is all about and in particular the birders um, you might you know you might learn a little bit about sound hearing and even you know how it is to lose sound uh, as you get older and sometimes these therapies can be used also for for hearing loss due to age when you can't use a um, um, any other you know auditory help because with me, my ear is actually good. It functions. What doesn't function is my cochlea. Um, it's not transferring the sound to, to my brain. So no matter what kind of hearing aid I could use, it would do no good. No matter how amplified a sound goes in my bad ear, I will not hear it. Just hear the, I might feel the vibration if it's loud enough, but I cannot hear it. So uh, for me, um, a hearing aid was going to be useless. So this is why I'm putting this together and hopefully, I mean, it'll be, there'll be some elements of success, um, some elements of learning. And like I said, I'm super excited about it. And hopefully, you know, it, it'll be something that you will also uh, find interesting. And here I'll give you a little view of the ocean and uh, I can hear it I can enjoy this ocean but it always sounds like it's over there no matter where I turn my head um, and that will be and may, maybe in a couple of weeks when my implant turned on something that won't happen anymore I'll be able to hear that the ocean is actually over there I know it's there but I can't hear it sir I hear it over there so join me see what happens and wish me luck. Well, by the time you see this, I will have done it. So, uh, all right, thanks.